Welcome to GovCast, a video interview series from Government Fleet Magazine. I'm T. Dow, Executive Editor of Government Fleet, and today we'll be learning about rising fuel costs and how to use fuel management systems to help control these costs. Uh, well, today we'll be talking to Tom Bates from Multiforce Systems. Multiforce Systems is the creator of the FuelForce line of fuel management hardware and software systems for fleets and has been in business for 35 years. Uh, today we'll be discussing how government agencies are handling higher fuel costs, what to look for in a fuel management system, how to integrate electric vehicles into your fuel management system, and how to government agencies can use fuel data to improve operations. Before we start, remember to connect with us on social media. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss future episodes of GovCast. You can also find these episodes on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you'd like to listen on the go. And now here is my conversation with Tom. So Tom, uh, gasoline prices have risen considerably this year. How are government fleets dealing with this? And do you have any suggestions for them? Well, they're, they're feeling it big time for two reasons. Uh, in the first place, it, if they just have a price increase, uh, it's going to ruin their budget because they probably didn't anticipate it. So they're going to have to cut corners elsewhere. But more importantly, from the fleet manager, fuel management point of view, uh, they're going to be looking at more theft because while theft is not a normal, uh, real problem anymore because fuel management systems have kind of helped corral that, once you see prices shoot up the way they have, people get desperate and they find new ways to, to steal your fuel. So that, that's an important thing that they've got to deal with. And a lot of them are upgrading or making sure their systems are, are up to date. Some of them are replacing systems, and we've had some systems being upgraded and replaced. <clears throat> Other ones are putting in new systems. And in addition to that, besides systems, they should be making sure they calibrate their pumps regularly. And a lot of people sort of let that slip. But if you've got a pump that's not recording the amount of fuel that's going out, you can be losing fuel. And more importantly than that, and this is something that we deal with a all the time with our fuel management system is a bad pulser. Now the pulser is a little device that counts the uh, amount of fuel that's going through the pump, through the hose. And if that gets stuck and doesn't turn properly, uh, it causes a, a zero quantity transaction, we call it. And therefore you've been giving away fuel for nothing. So they got to worry about that. That's those are the kind of things that I see uh, are important about uh, the price increase. Okay, thank you. Um, so effective fuel management is always important, but you know, perhaps more so right now. Uh, in your experience, what's the most important thing to look for when it comes to a fuel management system? Well, fuel management is relatively straightforward. And I would say that miles per gallon or miles per working hour is probably the most important thing that you can look to to spot excessive fuel use. And that's all you're really looking for, is you're looking either for the theft that I mentioned earlier, or possibly for uh, vehicles that need tune-ups or vehicles that are using more fuel than they should, or maybe even for comparing one brand against another, you want to know which one is, is most cost-effective on fuel consumption. And that, that's why I think it's, it's the most important thing you can look at. And if you can look at your data, we, we have a miles per gallon report that people can use to actually look at every vehicle and see uh, how it compares with its brothers and sisters, and also to look for any exceptional issues like the broken pulsers I talked about or people that enter wrong miles and stuff like that. So that's, that's a, a short version of, of what I think is the most important with uh, and monitoring fuel. Uh, measuring miles is the biggest concern that we have. Uh, we've got a very low cost, very high quality uh, way to enter or to validate meter readings manually with the system. But we can also import miles from a telematic system like our Geotab partner, or we can uh, even go further and put in an RFID system. We partner in that case with 
identifuel or HID uh, to, to capture the, the fuel and mileage even automatically. Um, in an earlier conversation, we had talked a bit about reliability when it comes to choosing a fuel management system. Do you want to touch upon that? Well, fuel management systems have to, number one, record fuel. They are not really the place that you should be capturing other, in, other information. Uh, fuel, oil, uh, any fluids that are used to power the equipment. That's what fuel management systems are about. Fleet management systems can handle all kinds of things like, like labor and replacement analysis, things like that. Used to do that sort of thing in a previous life. But fuel management really is a matter of making sure you've got a good, reliable system that works every day, first time, all the time. And what we're seeing now with some of the fancy systems is they don't work all the time. They work most of the time and they, they create problems when they don't and they can become rather expensive. Um, electrification is a hot topic for government agencies, many of which have fleet electrification goals or mandates. Uh, can you talk about how EV charging fits in with the traditional gasoline and diesel fuel management? Well, it turns out it's become an important part of the solution uh, because so much of our fossil fuels come from unfriendly countries or, or unsavory people, I don't know. So we really have to uh, uh, find other ways to become energy independent. And electricity is going to become an important part of that. Uh, five, five years ago, uh, Fuel Force uh, in, in integrated electric charging into our standard fuel management system so that we treat it just like any other fuel. We treat it like gasoline, diesel, E85, hydrogen, petroleum, what, whatever. So, uh, but electricity is the uh, it's a very promising fuel, but it has its own set of problems, uh, issues that have to be uh, dealt with. The one thing it, in, it involves parking lots, uh, facility management, as well as fuel fleet management, because it takes you two to four hours to charge a vehicle, uh, and as opposed to five minutes to put fuel in it. So. You really have to think in terms of when you're going to do that fueling, where are the vehicles going to be, and you're going to tie up a parking space with a, part, with a charger. Uh, government fleets also need to scrap some of the old rules where it said uh, don't uh, provide your employees with, with fuel. That was done early in the early days because gas stations around the country were private enter, uh, enterprises and the government agencies didn't want to interfere with private enterprise. However, with electricity, you're not going to see gas stations with electric fueling, uh, except for the, perhaps on the highways, but uh, with your normal two to four hour charging, they're going to have to be able to get energy at their uh, workplaces. So workplace charging will become very, very important. Uh, one of the good things is that uh, electricity can't be siphoned off your vehicles. Uh, gasoline can, and that's gonna be one of the big issues with this rising price. But on the other hand, you can put energy or electricity into your vehicle at the wrong time of day and be paying a 10 times as much for it as you would at normal uh, at evenings or off hours, off peak hours. So peak demand is a big, uh, then you have to watch out for. Uh, electric vehicles are potentially cleaner, and it's cleaner burning, so it's good for the environment. And so we think it, all these benefits will outweigh the, uh, the negatives. And uh, last question, you mentioned that data manages, management is a big part of fuel management that some operations tend to overlook. Um, how can fleet and fuel managers better use their data to improve their operations? The way I look at it, uh, the, we started a, a fuelserve.net, which is a software as a service rather than a computer application. And what, what we are doing with that is giving the fleet managers 
direct access to their data so that they're uh, not having to go through their IT department and, and to get their reports and that sort of thing. It's one thing to do a billing program with your, with your fuel management system, but it's the other to find out what, what's going on in your fleet. And that for that, you wanna have the managers themselves be able to go in and pull down the data, put it into spreadsheets, chop, channel it, and analyze it in ways that they can see where the problems are. And to that end, we have found that some of those these fleets just don't have the staff to do that. So we're introducing our own uh, advisory service in order to help them by we can go through, look at their data, and send them, a, a, say, a monthly report, giving them some of the things that we can spot. So we can help them if they don't have that resource, and we, we would be their uh, fuel advisory service, if you will. All right. Uh, I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Thank you so much for your time, Tom. And thank you to all of you who tuned in to today's episode of GovCast, sponsored by Multiforce Systems. I want to hear from our viewers. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of GovCast. See you next time.